Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the 30th episode of the Books, Hooks and Yarn Knitting Podcast. Uh, my name is Crystal and this is a small space on the internet to celebrate a big love of yarn and knitting. Um, it's actually a very special episode because we hit a year of the podcast this week. Um, so that's quite an achievement and I'll do a bit of a giveaway later. All right, let's see. Today is Sunday, the 31st of October. Happy Halloween if you celebrate. Um, I have a very sucky dog at the front door, so I apologize for that. Jazzy! Come here, baby. You don't need to be sucking at the front door. I will start with what I'm wearing. This, it was my birthday last, not the Friday, just gone Friday before. And this is actually a birthday present for my mum. I only put it on to kind of show you guys because it is quite sunny and warm here today but this is the shawl she made me for my birthday um i couldn't tell you the yarn or anything i was with her when she bought it she bought it from little woolly makes in hastings um but other than that i could not tell you what it is or what the pattern is but the color is absolutely divine and i do think i will be wearing it quite a lot um, it is a little bit smaller than I would normally make, so I will probably just have to give it a bit of a tie or something when I do wear it, just to make sure it stays on, but it is quite beautiful, and I'm absolutely in love with this colour. Alright, so I had to relocate to the bedroom because, being Sunday, everyone's home. The kids were out the front playing, but they were playing like right near the window that I was recording near. So I gave up on trying to make that work. So that's why it's a bit of background noise in the beginning part of the video. Um, and I came in here. All right. So yes, this is the shawl that my mum made me. Uh, it's very pretty. I can't wait to wear it. Um, we're just so up and down here in Melbourne, Victoria at the moment that there's a very good chance I'll be wearing it this coming week. All right. So a year of the podcast. I can't believe it's been a year already. I remember starting on the 26th of October, it was four days after my birthday last year. Um, I had finished a, sh a shawl, I no I hadn't finished the shawl yet. I don't even know what inspired me to. I think I've been doing short videos on Instagram TV because I was doing a month of knitting pink for breast cancer awareness and I felt so comfortable doing that. I thought, I wonder if I could chat about this for half an hour to 45 minutes. And so I decided to give it a go. My first video is so bad. It's shot in portrait instead of landscape. And it's just a bit, a bit funny to look back on now. I realized after I had recorded it twice um, that that's what had happened. And I was like, I can't, I can't record it a third time. So I didn't, I just left it as it was and made sure I didn't make that mistake again. Um, and then, what else was interesting about the beginning? I used to do two recordings every single episode. So I wasn't working at the time, so it was a bit easier to have time to do it. But I used to do a practice recording first, and then, cause I would try to do it all in one big long take. And talking for 45 minutes without making any mistakes is really hard. So um, I, yeah, I used to do like a practice one first and then I would go ahead and do the actual recording. So that took up a lot of time. So I was having an iced latte because it is a little bit warm here today. So yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> now I've learned how to, um, I knew how to do this back then too, but I didn't really want to. I just chop and edit and just warn you guys that there might be some interruptions because Life happens. I work full time. I have two kids. I have a husband and puppy and a cat. There's just a lot of stuff going on here. So hopefully we won't have too many interruptions today, but I can guarantee there will be, well, there's already been one since the beginning. So there's possibly going to be more. All right, I have some finished objects today. Um, obviously one was not made by me, uh, but the other one was my entwined beanie that the pattern, I test knitted the pattern for Astrid of Wattle and Wool. Um, her podcast is amazing, by the way. You should go check it out and see her on YouTube. I'll link it below. Um, yes, this beanie is absolutely stunning. The cabling in it is so pretty. And the way she's done the decreases to make sure that pattern's continued is um, very clever. 
so I will show it to you now. I'm not gonna put it on because the hair is up and everything today, but here it is. Look how pretty that is. And look at the fuzz on that from the mohair. It's kind of hard to see, there we go, against my white walls, but, well, they're not white, but they're like. So yeah, I absolutely love it. It was going to be a present for my younger sister, but I've tried it on and it fits me. And my daughter tried it on and it fits her and we both love it. So I think it's going to be another one of our shared beanies that we do. So yeah, um, there are a couple of mistakes in it. So I make this the front and this is the back because I accidentally twisted a couple of stitches in that round there. Um, and unless you're a knitter, you're not going to notice it anyway, but I noticed it when I did it. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. I would put it on, but no, no, I'm not going to. It does fit. It fits very beautifully. Um, I like the rim, brim folded up when I wear it. Not too far though, because I don't want to cover the beautiful cabling. Um, I don't know when it's going to be released, but yeah, I didn't do any modifications to this pattern whatsoever. I very, I don't think I ever have for a test knit before actually. Only thing I did a little bit different was it's a tubular cast on. I knit the first four rounds. Uh, no, it's a provisional cast on. And then you join it so you get that beautiful rolled edge, which makes it tubular, I think. I can't remember. Um, either way, I knit the first four rounds flat. So I did them um, as rows and just knit them back, uh, knit and purled them back and forth before I joined them. Um, because that was easier for me and I don't like magic looping so yeah that was the non-magic looping option I just love looking at it and touching it I just love this so much I can't stop the textures in it are just so beautiful and look at these decreases that's assuming I did them all correctly this is what it's supposed to look like it's so pretty I absolutely love it all right that's my only fully finished object I also have half a pair of socks. Um, Mel from Down Under Dye is doing the Down Under Dye cut along, uh, which is like a, a um, knit or crochet along. Uh, you basically make a cat themed object or use. Um, what was I saying about interruptions? Uh, or use yarn that has a cat on the label or is named after something catty. Or the pattern has cat in the name or the designer has cat in the name or something like that i chose the kitty ankle socks um i did them a little bit differently though so look at that i've finished my heel i think it was two episodes ago i told you guys all i needed to do was a few more rounds and the heel was finished i finally did it this morning but yes this is my sock uh so modifications for the pattern heavily modified <laughs> basically all i kept was the chart for the cat um I knit them cuff down instead of toe up because I just couldn't fathom casting on toe up socks at the time of night that I did cast these on. I knit, 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 knit. I did 20 rounds for the cuff because I always do. And then I think I did, it might be 20 or 30, I can't remember. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 rounds. And then I added in this little pink and grey detail there just because why not then I knit 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 um I did have to do a little bit of math along the way to figure out how long my foot needed to be like I kind of figured where my heel was going to measure in sorry uh, how many rounds I needed to do for my foot to be long enough um including the cat because that's where I set my toes down here so and then I did the cat according to the chart little eyes nose Measured where I need to start my toe from so I can do that with the next sock as well. Did my toes, which is just like a fanned toe. And then I grafted the toes together and then I came back and cut my heel and I decided to do that bright pink to match with the band and the little kitty nose. Now yarn. All right. The pink is a mini from Melbourne City Dye Works budgie smuggler i love saying that uh sock set so that's what the pink is the dark gray is ren and ollie and it is 
Uh, I've done this so many times and I've forgotten it every single time. It is... I know I won't have the tag in here, so I don't know why I'm bothering to look. But I've been pleasantly surprised before. Oh, no, I got that wrong. Sorry, the dark grey is not Ren and Ollie. That was a different pair of socks. That was my husband's socks. This dark grey is Cascade Yarns Heritage. So they're 75, 25, superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, I've already cast on the second sock this morning. So that's the dark grey. And the light grey is Nundle Woolen Mills Sock Yarn, um, dyed by me. Um, concrete, I think my daughter called it. Yeah. Um, so yes, I have finished the one, cast on the second. I should have it done when it gets done, I'm not putting a time frame on my knitting anymore because I do it for the enjoyment of it. I'm a process knitter. I do enjoy the end product, but I really just enjoy knitting and being able to knit and all the things I'm learning with knitting. So yeah, I love being able to just create something like this out of some yarn and, well, I can't say two needles because I use a nine inch circular. Um, yes, yeah, so I knit these on a nine inch circular, 72 stitches because I like... I don't know, my, I knit tight, so I think I've done 64 and 68 before, and they do fit, but I knit very tight, so they are a tighter fit. Um, these fit perfectly when I do 72 stitches. Um, it's not like it's not a big sock. It's just I knit, but the fabric's quite tight. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, my fabric is quite tight um what else was I going to say about these I have no idea oh I didn't it's not a very long leg I normally do a longer leg than what I have here I think it only ended up being 30 rounds um I normally like to do 40 and I've been working towards 50 and 60 round legs as well so yeah and the heel is just like a regular decrease heel I don't think is this called a wedge heel I can't remember I'm not sure, but it's one basically you just knit a few rounds and then you start decreasing on both sides until you get down to half the stitches you started with and then you graft it together. So yeah, I am holding those in my Down Under Dye. Nope, not Down Under Dye, that's a different bag. This one is from Mavis Castle So this is a bag from Megan uh, with kitty cats on it and I absolutely love it. It's so roomy. Like, look, it's got quite a big square bottom, so it fits a lot in here. Um, and I've just got my knit pro zings in here because that's what I use to do my heels and toes when they get too small for my nine inch circular. All right, that's one half finished project. I've got a few things, but that's the thing that was actually half finished. Um, I've been trying to work on lots of little things, so I've made a little bit of progress on a few different objects. So instead of just sitting there and knitting on my shawlography all the time, because I'm already behind on it, so I'm just knitting that when I feel the urge to. And I'm doing that with everything else as well. If I feel like I want to knit on it, I knit on it. Oh, I forgot that I'm halfway through a row with this. All right, this is my grain shawl by Tin Can Knits, and I'm halfway through a row, so I might be a bit awkward to show. Not even halfway through, I've just started. Like the end bit. That's okay. So last time I saw you, I had done two rows of the main colour again. So that's where my little rainbow is. I haven't done much. I only did this yesterday. I was just working on this last night. We had some people over and I was just working on that while we were chatting. So it's coming along really well. I'm quite fond of knitting on this. I'll see if I can pop it on over my head. Let's see. There we go. Um, I am definitely thinking that I'm going to just knit until I have gotten down to a very small amount of this, maybe 10 grams or so, and then I will bind off, um, and then I will block it and see if I can't get some more growth out of it that way, because I would like this middle section, because these are yarn overs in the middle. I would like that to grow a little bit and stand out a little bit more. So it's got like quite a pronounced yarn over section instead of being a bit squished in. Um, and same with the edges. I would like those to be a little bit more pronounced. 
Um, yarn, I've mentioned this multiple times uh, in other episodes, but it's going to be a long one today, so why not? Uh, Empathy by Dragonfly Yarns. The blue, pink and yellow are Sparkle Minis from Melbourne City Dye Works. And the purple and grey are Mystery Minis from my stash. I'm beginning to question now whether or not that grey that I found was actually the mini that went with this. But, nope, it's not. I just don't know where it came from. <laughs> uh, oh well. Let's see. Um... I still haven't decided if it's going to be a gift knit or not. I think I'm going to probably keep it for myself, to be honest. I think because I've been knitting on it for so long, I started this so long ago, um, that, yeah, I think I'd like to just... And it's my first... No, it's not my first shawl. I will show you my first shawl later. <coughs> Excuse me. It's my first fingering weight shawl. So it has been a lot of work. All right, what else have I been working on that is not my shawlography? Um, let's have a look. I decided to pick up and do a few rounds on my Kitty Brioche hat by Suzanne Summers the other night. So I kind of guessed where I was up to. I think I was actually a few rounds lower than where I put my Progress Keeper, but because I forgot to put it in last time I showed, I um, just took my best guess. So that's where I put it in. It's a little, oh, you can't see it because it's back to front. It's a little bee and honey comb stitch marker. Um, it just flipped over again, didn't it? I'm trying to think who I got that from. That was from a yarn purchase. Of course it was because what else would it be from? Uh, I cannot remember. I would have to pop it down the bottom, I think. Um... So yeah, and I've got my kitty cat one from Obsession Yarns up here as well. Because this is another entry for the Down Under Dye catalogue. So that's been extended for two weeks. It's now going until November 14th, if I remember correctly. You can check it out on Mel's Instagram. She's Down Under Dyer. Um, and she also has a podcast on here as well. So I'll link that below. So it is being knit with two skeins of yarn. Excuse me, sorry, I have a, like a dry tickle in my throat and it will not go away right now. Didn't have it before I started this episode. Alright, so the mohair I'm using is Obsession Yarns, so it's got a cat on the label. So I thought that went very well. And it's Ariella. And it is 75% kid mohair, 25% mulberry silk, 50 grams, you get 420 meters. So that's that one. And this one is Red Riding Hood Yarns. They don't dye anymore. It is their Bell Base, it's, which is a DK. And it is Awkward Family Photo. Uh, this is quite a big one. This is a 200 grams. Well, it was 200 grams before I started knitting with it. Um, yeah, 200 gram skein instead of 100 grams. It was from a wool swap. It's come, uh, coming along very nicely. So I have to knit this until it's 28 centimetres. And last time I measured, I think I was at... 20 so I've only got eight centimeters to go but because you do every round twice essentially because of brioche um it is coming along a lot slower yeah it's not gonna work <laughs> um coming along a lot slower than other projects but I do enjoy just picking it up and knitting on it um because I do quite enjoy brioche I love the squishiness of it when you're working with it, I like that it's not just completely mindless. You do have to put a little bit of thought into it. Um, this has also been great for teaching me how to read my brioche stitches and figuring out mistakes that I've made. So it has been wonderful for that. All right. What else have I got to show you? I might move my stitch marker now so I remember because my progress creeper, sorry. Otherwise, I will forget again. There we go. I didn't move it on my grain shawl, but that's okay. I'll do that later. That one's a bit easier to keep track of because of the colours. Alright, last one to show you before shawlography. Told you I've been needing a lot of different projects. Um, my daughter's anchors tea. There we go. That's how much I've gotten done. I had to go get my youngest tested 
um, because her childcare was closed down and I spent three hours waiting with them in the car and I basically knit the rest of the purple and started the pink. Um, but yeah, it's coming along quite nicely. I have to double check with, I'm just going to pop a progress marker on there so I know where I'm at now before I knit on it again later tonight. Um, I need to double check the pattern because I assumed it had five repeats for the ribbing on the yoke because that's what it shows in the picture but then I didn't think to check to see what I would need for the extra small which is what I'm knitting because it's for my almost seven year old so oh, I've got the pattern right here so this is what I'm knitting the anchor tee by Petite Knit and you can see it's got the ribbing one two three four one, two, three, four, five bits of ribbon in the neckline. The yoke, sorry. So let me see. For the extra small, hmm. Oh, I think I do four. No, I do do five. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah, I do five. It's the ex the larger sizes that do an extra one, so that's okay. That's all right. Ooh, I'm not going to mess it up. So she'll be able to use all five colours from her minis. So we are using the Halloween 21 mini set from Down Under Dyer. The green was added in. That's from Rainbow and Sprinkles. Um, but yeah, it's coming along really nicely. I have put it down for a little bit after doing this section because um, my hands are getting a bit sore from all the ribbing. I don't know why, but ribbing hurts my hands a little bit. Mm. The only thing I would have done differently if I had known this before I started the pattern is I would have changed colours before I did the increases because there is like this little dippy section here. And I think if I'd changed colours before that happened, it wouldn't have been as noticeable. But that's okay. She's not going to care. Obviously, this is not done by Halloween, which was my original plan. Um, because, yeah, this is why I should have put deadlines on my knitting. Because they come and go. And I just watch them as they whiz by. So, I will keep knitting on that. And eventually, she'll end up with a shirt. <coughs> I'm thinking I might also have this little tickle. Because I was very late doing this podcast this week. Because... I have a sinus infection. It hasn't been fun. All right, showography. I did take some photos and put them on Instagram this morning. So some of you might've already seen my progress, but if you don't want to see any spoilers for clue two, look away. Um, most of you are probably already knitting on clue three though. So that's okay. All right, I am housing this in a lovely little yarns AU bag because it finally arrived. Australia posted killing me slowly at the moment. Um, yes, it is huge and it's perfect for holding the whole shawl plus the rest of my skeins. Um, I say the rest of my skeins because I've knit quite a bit now and uh, there is has been some yarn usage. Now I have this on two very long cables so I can show it to you in all its glory because I was taking photos this morning. It was really hard to do. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I have a stitch marker here to show you where I was up to last time. So here it goes. Look it away now if you want to or don't want to see it. All right. It's going to be kind of hard to show. There we go. It is so pretty. I'm just looking through the holes to make sure I'm getting in frame with this. All right. So I was up to here. Last time I was still doing my triangle section. Then I did my first ever bobbles, which I actually found quite fun. I um, got them done by sitting down and watching an episode of Fiberbound. I watched Ali's podcast, her latest episode, and got them done. Uh, what else? Did, oh, bobbles. And then we did these wedges on the side, which took forever. Um, but I got them done and I finished those off and started set clue three. Uh, during knit night on Friday night with um, some other Aussie knitters. So I knit with um, Ali from Fiberbound, Jess from Jess Knits and Sews, 
Maddie from Mad About You, Mel from Down Under Dyer, and Astrid from Waterfall and Will joined us. Yeah, and we okay, like we started doing a weekly one when Shawlography started. Before that, we we're doing about every fortnight, but I think we're gonna try and keep up with our weekly one because it's so much fun. We just sat, sit and chat and knit. And it's lovely. Oh my god, I can't stop looking at it. This is the first time I've been able to see it, like, shown in a camera or something like that. It's so nice. I'm loving my colours. Alright, so the colours are, the blue is Night Sky by Mel from Down Under Dyer. The white is a light speckled, it's called Delicates by Maximu Yarns. The pink is Shell by Dragonfly Yarn. The grey is Fogbound by Dyed by Hand Yarns. And the purple is Deja Vu Dyed by Me on the Nunderwilla Mills Undyed Sock Base. So, yep, yeah, there they all are. Ah, I just love it. It's so amazing. I'm a bit addicted. I bought two more Stephen West patterns during his birthday sale so that I could knit on those. Alright, so it's Clue 3. I have now started. It is the brioche section. I haven't knit brioche flat before, but it seems to be going okay. Had to fudge it a little bit because my numbers weren't quite right by the time I got to the end of the first row. But that's okay because Stephen West literally tells us to just fudge it a little bit if that's what happens. Um, so I have fudged a little bit, but as far as I can tell, the brioche is working up the way it's supposed to. So. Hopefully I won't have to rip anything back. Um, I need to move my progress keeper, progress marker. I never remember what they're called. Pretty dangly thing that tells me what I'm currently up to. Okay, so that's been moved. So we're ready to go. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy the brioche section because after that comes these weird crisscross things that I have heard take forever. But I'm obviously so behind. Clue floor, fo clue floor. <laughs> Clue 4 has already dropped and I'm just started Clue 3, which is fine because I am literally just going at my own pace now. I'm just enjoying it. Um, I did take it to work to get the wedges done because that was relatively simple. It is not garter stitch, by the way. It looks like it should be. It is not. There is like purling involved. Um, I spent more time explaining what it was. And how it was designed by a man than I actually did on knitting it. So I don't think I'll be doing that again. Um, so this is so nice. It's not even finished yet and it's like big and beautiful and squishy. And it's going to look so good when it's finished. Um, oh, so uh, uh, this is just strictly at home knitting now. It's with the brioche and stuff and I have to follow the pattern, it's just become a bit too much to try and take around with me. So yeah, I will. And now that I'm not working from home anymore because school is back full time in Victoria this coming week. So I will be back at work full time and I won't have the time to sit there in between marking work and meetings and stuff to knit. So it will take a little bit longer to get done and that's okay. I'm aiming for the end of November, but like I said, I don't want to put time frames on anything. I just want to enjoy it. I don't care if this takes me six months to finish. I just am really enjoying it. So yeah, that's all of the things I have been working on. Um, oh, I just wanted to point out these gorgeous creations you see up here. My mum made these for my birthday. So this is actually a pincushion, little cactus. I think I'm going to stick my blocking pins into it it's a bit cute so I've got a cactus and oh I've got an avocado keyring which she literally just whipped up in like the night before my birthday and a tea cup with a little tea bag hanging off of it which is a bit cute so yes I love them she's very very clever she made those for me plus my shawl it was lovely. All right. So since it's a year of the podcast, I thought I would share some things that I've made previously in much earlier episodes before I knew a lot about yarn and gauge 
and needles <laughs> and stuff like that. So one of the first things I wanted to show you was the, my Pirate's Cove shawl. So this is she. This is supposed to be knit in two, three colours, but I knit mine in five because I had been given a cylinder of um, acrylic yarn in various, varying shades of blue for my birthday. And I decided to knit this out of those, not knowing anything about yardage or different weight yarns. Like I knew what DK weight was and it was about eight ply. That was it. This actually is a, supposed to be a worsted weight shawl, I think. Um, and I used DK. So it is much smaller than it was supposed to be. Um, I struggle to wear it a little bit sometimes because it, oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> because it do, it just comes undone a lot. Um, it is quite soft and obviously very easy to look after because I just throw it in the washing machine. But I think I would like to make it again in the proper yarn with actual wool and see the difference and the proper size needles I think I use different size needles and I use flat like straight needles I won't be doing that this time around so this is going to be a remake and I think I'll do it with the three colors instead of the five and see how we go so that was one of my yep one of my first things and I was very proud of it when I did it and I'm still proud of the fact that I made a shawl um and my daughters love using it so it's not like it's going to go to waste but I would definitely like to make a non-acrylic version. Um, the rest of my things I want to show you. I don't have a lot of my earlier makes because they either just got gifted or I don't know where they are. So, and I mean, it's only been a year. It's not like I actually have a lot to show. Um, I knit Christmas socks for my, like my husband and my two daughters and myself last year. I'll be doing them again this year. Um, my husband and I still wear our Christmas socks all the time. My daughters don't really, but they have other socks since then that they wear. Um, yeah. Next thing I wanted to show you was I went on a bit of a beanie kick at one point and I made a bunch of pull the wool over beanies and I decided to use hand dyed yarn when I did these. So this is Nyad by Dragonfly Yarn and it's just the most stunning colour. Um, these are beanies for the whole, like they fit my whole family. My husband can wear them too. Um, this one I made a little bit shorter because, um, I don't know. I just wanted one that I didn't have to roll the brim up on. Um, but it still fits everybody. So, and I added pom-poms because what's a beanie without a pom-pom? And then this one has been stretched a lot because my husband thought he was helping me and washed it. And then he hung it up to dry in a way that just completely stretched it out. It is so big, but I figure it is now a messy bun under the beanie. Beanie. Because it will fit my bun under there. Even though I have a lot of hair. <coughs> I'm so sorry for the coughing. So yeah, this one has been stretched, but that's okay. Um, I made others, but I've gifted them as well. Um, this one is also a dragonfly yarn. Look how stretched it is. A dragonfly yarn purchase. I think it is pixie dust. Possibly. Hmm. I will put it here if I need to. All right. And the other two things I have to show you are cows. One's a fairly recent finish and the other one wasn't too long ago either. This is my sock head cow. I modified this pattern. I did a four by four ribbing instead of a two by two. I knit this in uh, Meet Me at Central Perk. No, that was a different one. This one was, I'd forget my own head if it wasn't attached to my body. I think it's a Beatrix Potter colorway from Stitchcraft and Wizardry. And I held it double with a skein of this candy fluff from Obsession Yarns. 
um the colors just seem to really go together because the one from stitch crafter was originally just a really pale white and blue together with pops of really pale pink so they went really well together and i absolutely love it it is very soft very warm only thing i would change about this if i when i knit it again because i will knit this again um, is I would make it as long as the pattern says. I got a bit tired of knitting it and I just decided to call it quits and finish the ribbing and bind it off. Um, I would make it as long as it said because that way I would have a bit more scrunch and warmth. It is not itchy at all. It's so soft. Um, yeah, I'd have a bit more scrunch and warmth in there. And yeah, I will definitely make this again. This is part of the reason I started collecting my hair because I knit with this and it was just so, the final material was so soft and beautiful I couldn't resist and I started collecting my hair. So yeah. And then my final one that I will make again is, so all of these patterns, sorry, that I'm showing you are ones I want to make again. Sorry, I have my hair fluff on me. Oh, it's all over. Yep, all over. Cool. Uh, I'm going to make again the Kodiak Cow by the Blue Mass. Um, the reason I'm going to make it again is because my bind off was quite tight. Even though I, I tried to make it loose, I want to do that again. And I also didn't really understand much about brioche when I was doing it. So I want to make it again now that I feel like I can read the stitches and maybe avoid a couple of mistakes that I've made in the pattern. Where did that go? There it is. There's a big wide stitch there and just some other bits and pieces. I fudged up quite a bit. Oh, that's an end poking through. I was like, what is that stitch doing there? That's an end. That's okay. Ooh. Um, This final row round here, I fudged up like half of it and I don't understand how. So I would like to make it again and see if I can get through without any mistakes. Uh, lifelines might be the way to go this time around. Um, but I absolutely love this. I wear it quite frequently. It's been very cold within the classroom lately because of our rules about having windows and doors open. But I've worn that a lot. I definitely need to make another one. All right, on to some fun stuff. I am on a yarn ban. But somehow in this last week, I have received a lot of yarn. So I haven't bought any for at least two weeks now, but in true Australia Post fashion and knit crate fashion, all of my knit crates that I have purchased throughout the year have arrived all in one kit. So I bought my first one in June and I did July, August and September. I am going to struggle to tell you which is which, to be honest. I think June is the only one that I know for sure and that's because I have the books right here. Uh, oh no, sorry, I also know the August one. All right, so this is for June. I and so what I was doing is I was doing alternating months. So June I did the knit and crochet club and the sock club. July was just the sock club. August was the knit and crochet and the sock club. September was just the sock club. So this was the June ones that I received. These are the last ones to arrive, mind you. Um, so this is the knit and crochet. So this is Vitalana Oasis in the Nevada colorway, I think. Yeah, Nevada. So that's a DK weight. Because as you know, I'm trying to build up my DK. So that's why I alternate between this one and the sock one. So this is quite pretty. I don't have a lot of browns in my collection, like at all. Um, so this was quite interesting to receive i probably wouldn't like it if it weren't for the pops of blue in there but those are quite pretty so that the pattern that came for that is this one here um i don't know if i'll make that i'll have to look at a better picture of it oh there we go it's a bit holy i don't think there's much i could really do with it to be honest so I will probably try and make a DK weight shawl if I can find some other colours to go with it. Um, but yes, it's very pretty. <coughs> and this is the sock club one. 
This is Knitology's Happy Little Sock in Peapod. Uh, this colour is amazing. I will have lots of these, please. And I think uh, this will probably end up being a pair of socks for my husband or for myself because quite, I just, I love it. It's beautiful and I don't care what colour my socks are. That was June. I think this is July. I think. I'm not too sure about the sock yarn for the next two. Uh, so July did just the sock club and this is Vitalana's Mirage sock uh, by Armagosa. The, sorry, the colorway is Armagosa. Um, I didn't, oh, sorry, I didn't tell you what the yarns were made of from June. So this one is 50% alpaca wool, 25% Peruvian Highland Merino wool blend, and 25% Surrey alpaca. So it's very soft, smells a bit cheapy, just delightful. I love that. And this one is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Tencel, 10% Nylon. So that should be some very good socks. And this one is 50% Superwash Merino, 35% Bamboo and 15% Nylon. I think this will be a shawl because I feel like with the bamboo in it, it's going to have a lovely drape. So that's July. This is August. And I know this one's August because my friend Kat of... Oh, sorry. Kat's also part of our Friday Night Knit Nights. Kat of Oliphant Cat. She has a podcast and she's doing giveaways on Instagram at the moment for her patterns because she's just celebrated five years as a pattern designer which is amazing i wouldn't even know where to begin to design a pattern i just follow them um this is audine wool's mellow it is 80 percent huakaya alpaca i hope i said that properly huakaya i don't know 20 percent tensile and there's the bulky weight so i would say it's probably mm -hmm. A 10 or a 12 ply, uh, probably a 12 ply if it's bulky because 10 ply is worsted, I think. Um, so the pattern that came with this is actually a gorgeous pattern that was written by Kat. So I don't have the book to show you because it was a digital pattern for that month. Um, but I might pop a picture here to show you what it looks like. But it's really pretty and I actually can't wait to knit it. Um, I wouldn't have been too keen on this colour and then I saw the pattern and thought this will actually be perfect for it. So that will be lovely. And the colourway for this is Mimosa, by the way. I've never seen a Mimosa this colour, but okay. Uh, the Sock Club one is Audine Wools as well. Indulgent Sock. This is Spa Day and it is 60% Superwash Merino, 20% Camel. 20% nylon. I've never used camel in yarn before, so that will be an experience. Um, it's very, very soft. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I think it might get paired with something else and become something. The colour is showing up very nicely in my camera at the moment. It's very pretty. All right. Um, so that was all my knit crate yarn arriving all at once. So, yeah. Got quite a few additions to add to the yarn cupboard. Um, I've already taken photos and put all the information of those into my stash on Ravelry because I am trying to do this thing where it doesn't go into the cupboard until I've taken a photo. Um, and then because my friends know me so well, they bought me yarn for my birthday. So this is from Miss Click Clack um, on Etsy. So this is Posh Boy. This is uh, Milkman's Horse Worsted. <coughs> so it's just 100% Superwash Merino. 187 meters to 100 grams now because my pirates cove shawl needs to be worse to weight well if i've got enough yardage because i think i need three skeins i think this will be one of them because it's just so pretty and then i might try and find a blue and a purple to match in with it and then i also got treated to the casterton kid silk in blakey blue from miss click clack so it's 65 percent kid mohair 35 percent silk uh, 500 meters is in for uh, 50 grams is 500 meters so that's a lot of meterage for a 50 gram skein normally that's about 400 420 so I can't wait to use that um, it is definitely going to be held double or something or a small ranunculus would be very pretty in this oh, 
I was gifted a lot of stuff this week for my birthday. Some things arrived late because of Australia Post. Uh, my friend Ali from Fiberbound gifted, made and gifted me this beautiful Halloween bag. She's very talented and I absolutely love it. Got a little tag in there so I can think of her every time I use it. Um, and Megan from Mavis Castle Lane also gifted me um, some stunning stitch markers and this beautiful skeleton brooch with knitting needles going through the skull. Um, my daughter's already tried to claim it and ask that I buy her one. <laughs> Uh, and these are the stitch markers that came with this. There's a moth, a skull, and a spider that has a skull for the body. It was very cool. Thank you very much. These surprises were very surprising and very much appreciated. It was so wonderful. Um, so since I got some gifts, I thought I would give some gifts to you guys. Let's talk about the giveaway. To celebrate a year of the podcast, I thought I would go stash diving. And I picked three yarns for a very specific reason. Okay, so I picked this one from Yarns by the Bay. This is Lilacs on Liz's sock base, deluxe sock base, sorry. So it's 85% um, super wash extra fine merino, 15% nylon. I picked this one because Liz is very local to me. She's the most local to me yarn dyer I know. Um, and she's just an absolutely beautiful soul and I just I've struck up a friendship with her and I adore her yarn I think most of the skeins in my collection are Liz's yarns. Liz tends not to repeat colorways so if you get this it's gonna have to be a one skein pattern or pair it with something that will go beautifully with it um but yeah it's absolutely stunning and like the speckles in it are just so beautiful so you're gonna get all three of these skeins if you win this giveaway by the way um i chose this skein of merino singles from rosa Island because hannah was the first australian knitting podcast i came across and i watched five years worth of her podcast one after the other until I got up to date with her most recent one when I found her podcast because she's just a joy to watch and she knits beautiful things and she dyes stunning yarn. So this is Philippa on 100% Australia Superwash Merino um, and it's just beautiful. It, um, yeah, this almost was part of my shawlography actually. And last but not least is this candy fluff skein from Marie of Obsession Yarns. Marie was one of the first indie dyes I bought from. Um, and she sent this as a tiny mini and I requested that she dye me a hundred grams because I was obsessed with it. And she did. So I used one for my, or almost one, I didn't use the whole thing, for my sock head cow and I decided it's been sitting, this one's been sitting there since, and I would love to give it to someone so they could enjoy the beautiful colours in it because it really is a stunning colourway. Um, so, these three skeins of yarn, and there'll be a project bag and some other goodie bits in there because I just can't resist <laughs> giving people things. Uh, to enter, just comment below on something you've enjoyed from the podcast in the last year or... Um, Maybe with your favourite thing that I've knitted or uh, a favourite memory or something from the last year. I'm not really sure. We also hit 500 subscribers on here. So that is such an achievement. Thank you so much for hitting that button. It has meant the world to me. I love coming on here and chatting to you guys about all this stuff. Um, I was correct today, by the way. There's been so many interruptions. Um, but obviously it can't bother you guys as much as it bothers me because uh, nobody's mentioned anything <laughs> so just leave a comment below I can't wait to read them and I will draw that next episode um you will be able to find me on Instagram as well it's currently books hooks and yarn but I think from the next episode onwards it's going to be crystal knits 
I think this will also be the last episode of the Books, Hooks and Yarn Knitting Podcast and I think next week's episode will be the first one of the Crystal Knits Podcast. And hopefully in a year's time I won't be changing the name again. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for coming with me on the journey of Books, Hooks and Yarn. Um, and I can't wait to see you next week for a whole new episode. Until then, look after yourselves mentally, emotionally, socially, all of that, physically as well. Don't let yourselves get sick or run down or anything, trying to catch up with being social again here in Victoria. Um, I will see you all next week. Uh, don't forget that all of that stuff is really important and so are you. Bye.